So today I want to practice using the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. This is a part in the semester where a lot of college algebra students, they're, they're learning theorem after theorem after theorem, and they sometimes get a little bit bogged down. So I'm here to translate what this all means. So I hope I can make it sound easy. The, use the remainder theorem and synthetic division to find the function value. So I'm going to rewrite this. First problem, you can call it 1 and 2 if you like f of x equals 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x plus 18. And we are told to find f of negative 3. Now, you might be inclined, you know, to store negative 3 in there and get some output, but it doesn't say to do that. It says to use the remainder theorem along with synthetic division. So let's see what happens when we divide. using synthetic division. So I'm going to set that up on the next slide and I'll hit pause. So you can see on this slide I have it set up. We have our polynomial function in descending order. Uh, notice 3, 2, 1 constant. So it's in perfect descending order. I've placed the coefficients in my magic box and I have the constant here, negative 3. have that outside my magic box. <laughs> okay, bring down the 4. Negative 3 times 4 is 12, uh, negative 12, record that here. Remember when you go down, you add. So 6 plus negative 12 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 is 18. 5 plus 18 is 23. And negative 3 times 23 is negative 69. And then this last way we add, we get the, we get the remainder. 18 uh, minus 69 is negative 51. So note to self, the remainder of the synthetic division is f of negative 3. And you say, no way, I don't believe it. <laughs> well, that's what the re by the remainder theorem. That's what the remainder theorem tells us. But don't trust it. I mean, don't, I mean <laughs> blind faith. You shouldn't have blind faith. You know, try it. Store negative 3 into the original. Is it So note to self, is it true? So I encourage you to take 4 times negative 3 and cube it plus 6 times negative 3 and square it, plus 5 times negative 3, you know, plus 18. Investigate. Does that come to be negative 51? And you will see it does. So what we're getting at is the remainder theorem says that the function evaluated at a constant is the same as if you were to run synthetic division, you know, using that constant. And you, whatever the remainder is, that's going to be the function evaluated at that constant. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and again, I encourage you to just, you know, think about all this evaluated and see if you do get at negative 51. And then you'll notice, hey, negative 51, negative 51. That's not coincidence. <laughs> that's going to happen. All right. Let's go back to previous slide. Problem number two, use the factor theorem to decide whether or not the second polynomial is a factor of the first. That's this polynomial here. So the question is, is x plus, uh, excuse me, x plus two, is x plus two, pens being fussy, a factor of that lovely polynomial? Now I'm going to hit pause and uh, set that up. Okay, again, so I have that set up on this slide. Here's our polynomial, and we want to know, is x plus 2 a factor? Now, you may be inclined to, factor means divisor, means, the, the, you know, the remainder would be 0. The remainder of longhand or synthetic division um, would be 0. Note to self would be 0. Well, you may be inclined to take x plus 2 and do longhand division and see if the remainder comes to be 0, but we weren't asked to do that. We were asked to use the factor theorem. So, <coughs> so factor theorem basically says take p and evaluate it at a constant. Um, now, the thing is, the constant has to be where x minus, all these theorems hinge on x minus c um, being a divisor of the polynomial function. So here, you know, it's a little tricky because you have x plus 2, but x plus 2 
could be rewritten as x minus negative 2. So your constant is actually negative 2. So that's a little trippy there. All these theorems hinge on x minus c as a, as a divisor of the polynomial function. So if you have x plus 2, your constant is really negative 2 is what I'm getting at. So note to self, constant in this case is, uh, is negative 2 c. Your constant is negative 2. So, all right, let's take, let's do it. You'll see what happens. Let's take the polynomial function and evaluate it at negative 2 and see what happens. Well, you're going to get 9 times negative 2 to the fourth plus 17 times negative 2 cubed, you know, minus 2 times negative 2 squared, you know, plus negative 2, and then um, plus 2. So anyhow, I encourage you to crunch all of this out. Crunch it all out. And guess what? You're going to get 0. So what I'm getting at is p of negative 2 comes to be 0. And the factor theorem says that if the polynomial function evaluated at a constant comes to be 0, then you know that constant is a 0 of the polynomial, and you know that x minus the constant. So therefore, therefore x minus the constant, x minus negative 2, is a factor.